Before we go tonight, we have a very cool piece of video to show you from 60 years ago that we dug up from our KGW vault. You've likely heard by now that Harry Belafonte, the singer, actor, and wide-ranging activist died today. The cause was congestive heart failure. From music to the silver screen to using his fame to highlight civil rights issues and social causes, Belafonte never seemed to back away from his commitment to social justice. And we found a clip of him here in Portland at the airport in 1963 while he was in town for a show. 60 years later, many of his words are still quite poignant and relevant today. Everybody's too busy telling me how many of their best friends are Negro <laughs> and refusing to view how many of those that are not intimately associated with them that really do live under the most bestial kind of uh, conditions. And I think in the Northwest, it may not be as intense or as complex as it is, for instance, in Mississippi or Birmingham or Georgia, but it nevertheless exists. And uh, this is why I say it's the, the white community is always shocked when, 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 when the Negro begins to protest his circumstance. They kind of say, well, gee, we thought everybody was happy. Well, how in the name of God and the name of truth can anybody ask a man to be happy with six kids in the bedroom? You know, and, or, or the frustrations of not having three square meals a day. It's like, you know, it's, just, it's like trying to look at an animal in the zoo. You know, it's, it's, we're not different. You know, we're just really not. Negro has wisely come to a position of truth about his life. Uh, in, if my body has cancer, I don't want the doctor to treat me for a head cold, and I don't want the doctor to treat me for some other superficial ailment. I want to get to the source of the cancer. Sure, the Negro can keep his house a little cleaner, living in the ghetto. But that's not the problem. The problem is to get out of the ghetto. Sure, the Negro can stop carrying knives if he in fact does that. And a lot of us did. I did as a boy. I grew up in Harlem. I grew up in the Depression. I grew up in the 30s. My mother and father came home jobless. My mother was a domestic. My father was a chef. And he couldn't work. And uh, when we went out into the streets, the only vent to our anger and to our pent-up emotions and frustration was destruction. And in a way, it psychologically soothed us a bit, because whenever we looked at the police, we saw the police not as a friend of our needs and as the great protector, we saw him as the defender of the status quo and the power structure. And since the law was part of keeping me in my ghetto, and it was designed to keep me in my ghetto, uh, anything that I did that was in rebellion against the law was already for me a small victory. And I had nothing to lose. I didn't have anything to look forward to. Hmm. Harry Belafonte. He was 96 years old. And that's the end of our show. Thanks for watching. But remember, the story, our story, well, that never ends. I'll see you tomorrow.